In order to unpack what we're talking about here by um, unordered selections, let's, uh, let's rewind a little bit and let's call on the knowledge we know about ordered selections. By the way, we had a fancy name for ordered selections. We call these permutations, right? Permutations where the order is important, okay? So for ordered selections, we might ask a question like this. Um, what's the number of ways to permute, to arrange where order matters, um, three objects when you have five options to choose from? Now, at this point, we've been dealing with questions like this enough that we can go straight to an answer. We could call on our, um, our new specialized notation. What would we say? What would be the first number that we write down if we have five options? We would say, oh, you could, ah, so you could draw the box. I will draw the box in a minute, actually, boxes. Um, but we, we know that the boxes are just kind of a, um, a conceptual framework to allow us to work out the number. But we can just calculate the number, right? We can use our calculator. And what would we punch into our calculator for this question? Hmm. Yeah, very good. 5, P, 3, right? Um, you've got five things to choose from. You want to choose three of them, and we use this P for permute or for pick. That's actually sometimes how people read it, five pick three or whatever. Um, and in fact, I want you to go to your calculator now. Could you tell me what five P three is equal to? I'll wait till everyone get there, because you will all need your calculators, please. Yeah, but why should I put it in if you already Okay, now you should find it's equal to 60, right? Now, this is actually a small enough number. It's why I chose this for us. This is a small enough number that we actually could have done that by hand if we remember what 5P3 actually means. Do you remember? It's, it's shorthand for a, um, a bunch of factorials. Do you remember what's in the factorials? They're in a fraction. Uh, okay, very good. So in this case, in this case the, uh, the n factorial will be 5 factorial up on the top. Okay, and on the bottom, yeah, this is going to be 5 take away 3 factorial, right? So this is equal to 5 factorial on 2 factorial, and this calls back the boxes that Arian was reminding us of, right? Why would we have 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial? Well, if you've got 5 options and you want to choose 3 of them, um, here's our box. 1, 2, 3 options. The first time, oh sorry, 5 three objects. Um, the first time you've got five options to choose from, then the second time you've got four options to choose from, and three. You can see where this comes from, right? So, happy times, this all makes sense. Hopefully you remember this, okay? <laughs> now, I wanted to think about what does this actually look like in terms of an actual question, okay? So for instance, I might ask you to form a three-letter word, you know, word, right? A three-letter word from the letters a, B, C, D, and E. Okay? There are five options to choose from. Okay? Now, you might think, I, well, this is why we have these things for. I don't want to like, write all of this out because that would be a really time-consuming and slow way of doing things. When we talked about probability um, earlier on, we said you should list things out only as a matter of sort of last resort or if it's a very, very simple question. Okay? But there's something I want to illustrate for you that you kind of need to see all the options in front of you in order to understand. So here are all 60 of the options. Okay? Now, if you have a look, right, this is three, three letter words. And you can see I've got A, B, C, D, and E to choose from. Okay? And can you see that there are 60 there? Are you happy with that? Six by 10. Okay? Now, I want to use this as an avenue for understanding not ordered selections, but unordered selections. Suppose I reframe this question and said, how many ways can I just choose, not permute, not arrange, but just pick out um, three of those objects from the five options? What if order didn't matter? Now, if you have a look at this, you might be able to tell. I actually had to write these out. I had to work out what they would be. Could have written a program, I suppose, to do it, but I figured it would be quicker just to write out the 60 options. But I wonder if you can see I've done them in a logical way to make sure I didn't miss any and didn't double up on any when I put together the original 60. I wonder if any of you can tell just by looking at this sort of grid how I've done it. It's not random at all. 
What do you see, Aaron? You, uh, if you go from left to right, you use the same two letters to right. Very good. Um, if you didn't catch that, when I go from left to right, for example, just look at the top row, right? These six up here are all of the options using A, B, and C. Okay, if you have a look at all of these ones, you never see A, B, and C together all at the same time. Uh, and I do that for every row. In fact, <clears throat> each one of the rows represents uh, the choice of three letters, right? And then you just permit them, right? You just rearrange them and then you choose a different three and then you rearrange them and so on. Does this make sense? Okay. So if I wanted to say, how do I go from this question where order matters to a question of what if order doesn't matter? See all these six options, these six up the top, they're all the same choice, aren't they? They are all the same three letters, right? So this is all identical, all of these, all identical. It's the same three letters over and over again. Okay. So now if I rephrase the question, I'd like you to rephrase it with me. Okay. If I now asked you, what's the number of ways to choose three objects from five options where order doesn't matter? I'm even going to write that, right? Um, how many ways to choose? Um, you could also use the word combine because when you combine things, like in a salad, the order doesn't matter, right? You just kind of throw them in the bowl and there they are, right? How many ways are there to choose or combine um, three objects from the same five choices? And this part here means order doesn't matter. Okay, well I can move from the solution that we formed to four and I can kind of tweak it to get to the solution that I need, right? I can say, well, you start with, um, this is my number of ways, you start with this 5p3. That gives you all of the options there, okay? But do you notice that if order doesn't matter, I have drastically overcounted, right? Because all of these guys are the same, so I've overcounted by a factor of 6 on this top line. In the same way, by a factor of 6 here, all the way down, right? So in other words, I've got six times as many ways than I want, so I should divide by six to get to the actual number. Does that make sense? Let me say that one more time because it's a bit tricky, right? I have, using this, overcounted. I have six times as many different ways as I actually want. So to get to the answer that I need, I will divide by six, right? That will sort of compensate for the fact that I've overcounted. Does that make sense? Okay, now I'm going to push on this a little bit. Why is it 6? Where does this 6 come from? Can anyone tell me? Think about it. Thunar, what do you... Yeah, say again, Thunar. 6, uh, I'd love you to all write this in me, right? <clears throat> is exactly as um, Thunar says. It's not just a random number. It's 3 factorial. Now I'm going to push on that again. Why 3 factorial? Why should that be important to this situation? Hmm. Have a think. What do you reckon, Declan? Because uh, <coughs> you have to choose from 3 objects. Okay, so when you look at these three objects, right, and you can literally see it in front of you, okay, um, you've got three choices for that first one, then two choices for the second, and one choice for the last one. So every rearrangement is, well, they're all the same, like it's the same three letters that you chose, so that's why it's three factorial, it's the number of ways to arrange three objects, okay? Now, if we take this guy and remember that it's actually shorthand for this factorial stuff, okay, Let's see what happens when I put this into, like when I actually expand out my 5p3, because that's just an abbreviation, right? I've got 5 factorial on 2 factorial, that's the top, divided by 3 factorial from us fixing up the overcounting, okay? But um, fractions on fractions, that's a bit gross, isn't it? Let's fix this up and just create one fraction. That 5 factorial will still be on the numerator, and on the denominator, what will I have? 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Now, hold on a minute. Do you recognize this? We, we already have notation for this. We introduced it to you last year, or almost more than, well, no, more than a year ago, actually. What's our notation for this? Yeah, this is not 5p3, this guy. This is 5c3. Now, we didn't introduce this guy in the context of probability or arrangements at all. Where did you meet this? What topic is it from? This is from binomial theorem, right? This is the binomial coefficient. Okay, now at this point here, 
I could just stop and just point out, hmm, that's kind of cool that they seem to be the same thing. But if you're like me, you want to know why. Like, doesn't that drive you a bit crazy? Like, why should this thing, which we introduced a long time ago and haven't thought about really for a while, um, except for when we reintroduced the topic at the start of the term, um, why should it come up here? OK, 